our first unit is kind of one of the biggest building blocks of pre-cal, and I know Sarah is an ACP calculus, and she said her very first lesson in calculus was functions too. It was the exact same thing. It's that important that you have to do it two years in a row. Um, we will use the idea of functions really throughout our first semester, and then second semester is more kind of trig. But it's really, really important that we have a good understanding of what a function is, the different ways that we can represent it. Okay, so let's go back. Essential question of the day: What is a function? A function is a rule where you're taking what we call an input, okay, like your x values is how you guys have always kind of thought about that, and assign that to just one output. Function is a rule that takes what we call an input and assigns them to exactly one output. We say that the output is a function of the input. Output is a function of the input. I really suggest that you guys take some time to really read through the sections in your book. I, I love this textbook. I love the way that it presents ideas it's very different probably than math textbooks you're used to where it shows you how to do one problem and then maybe at the end it might apply it to you know some sort of real world this book does it completely backwards and i love that it presents every idea with a situation and we talk about that situation and then we kind of backtrack and get into any of like the algebra or skills that we need like the specifics so um, you'll see almost every lesson in your book to do it that way, and I, I love it. Instead of doing it backwards where the, the application is kind of the end. Um, so one thing that we need to understand are the ways to represent a function. We can represent it in words, so it's written out in a table, in a formula, like an equation, or in a graph. Okay. So the example that we are going to represent in those four ways is kind of bizarre, but um, so there is this cricket. I'm not sure where this cricket is in the world, but it's no tree cricket. Um, and your book uses actual, real. Um, you'll see down at the bottom their um, references. They use real, live information. Um, so this is a real thing. It's no tree cricket. There's a relationship between the chirp rate of this cricket. So chirp rate is going to be the number of chirps per minute. And the temperature, the air temperature. And I think your book says that this cricket is also called the temperature. So we can estimate the temperature by counting the chirps in a 15 second interval and then adding 14. And there's highlighters and things in those boxes if you want to do things like I don't feel like you're tied to what I'm doing up here.
So then it says the rule to find the temperature T from the chirp rate R, and again that chirp rate is chirps per minute, is an example of a function where the number of chirps determines the temperature. Okay, So in words we can say, and it's kind of just rephrasing what's already there to estimate temperature, We count the number of chirps in 15 seconds and add 40. So that's describing the function verbally or in words. If we're looking at this function in a table, we are usually looking at specific values of corresponding inputs and outputs. So again, the input is the chirp rate. So if we have 20 chirps in a minute, the corresponding temperature is 45 degrees, and I'm not sure if this is Celsius or Oh, Fahrenheit says, this is degrees Fahrenheit. And then we can fill in, and this is information given to us. I'm not just making these numbers up. If your chirps per minute is 40, your corresponding temperature is 50. And then that pattern continues. So we're increasing our input by 20. We're increasing our output by 5. and so on. Say that one more time. That's a good question. It's not. And this is where it's kind of confusing going from um, here down to the formula. The input is actually the chirps per minute. So when we write, I'm glad actually you asked this question. So when we actually write the formula, that 15 second interval that we count is how much of that input. So basically 15 seconds is how much of the minute. How much? A fourth. So when we go to write the formula for this, because what we do is count the 15 second interval, we take one fourth of the input, which is chirps per minute. That's kind of confusing, but I'm glad that you asked that question. And then we add 40. And then the last way that we can represent all of this is in a graph. Um, why don't we save a little bit of time and actually grab your calculators. Let's just graph this on our calculator instead of, I have no doubt that you guys can plot these points in, from the table. So let's just work on using our calculators a little bit. So if you have it with you, grab it, go to your y equals. And just type in that point two five x plus 40 would be the probably the best way to enter that in our calculator and then go ahead and do this for me hit zoom and then choose option number six and you should see absolutely nothing except your x and y axes why is that Do what? Exactly. What's what's the y-intercept in this function? 40. So the function's way up here. So you guys are going to have to really get good at understanding that. So go to your window. Increase your y-max so that you're seeing this function. Okay. 
So it's just a linear function. You could plot those points to get that line as well. So again, just one example where they are showing you the different representations. Am I concerned that you understand specifically our snowy tree cricket? No, it's just kind of the vehicle that we're using to show these different representations, all right? Questions before we move on? Okay, what we call a mathematical model is for example, that t equals one fourth r plus 40. A math mod mathematical model is really just a function used to describe an actual situation. Mathematical model is a function used to describe an actual situation. So like I said, that t equals 1 fourth r plus 40 is what we would call a model because that's describing what's happening with the temperature in those cricket chirps. So we have another example with an additional mathematical model. So we have the total cost of an item, including sales tax, modeled by the formula C equals X plus 0.07X. So basically what this is saying, you guys know how it works when you have something. You pick up a shirt or whatever at the store, you know what the price is. to simplify this formula and then you can just fill in the following equation. So kind of a pretty basic example of a model here. So these are like terms. So we could simplify this model by saying that the total cost of an item purchased is 1.07x. So when we look at our input and our output, the input here is the cost of the item. So like the cost that's on the price tag. And then the output would be our total cost with tax. All right, so what I want you guys to do, I don't think you really need, need to do this with me, take two or three minutes. I want you to take those, what, five input values. I want you to find each corresponding output, okay? Find the total cost of those five items.
here are the output values that we should be getting. 214, 337, 1853, 141.42, and 149.81. Okay. So we're just taking each of those inputs, basically multiplying by 1.07. Okay. Now, what I'm really concerned about with this problem is this next question. Does this formula represent a function? So what we're really thinking about is the definition of a function. Does every input have exactly one output? Yes or no? Can you somehow, let me ask this, can you somehow have a $2 item and the total cost be two different things? No. Okay, so every input is only going to have one output. So we would say that yes, this is a function. Each input is associated with exactly one output. The way that you are going to see um, functions written is using function notation. This is just an abbreviation that shows one quantity is a function of another. That F subscript N is kind of shorthand for function. Function notation is just an abbreviation that shows that one quantity is a function of another. So to get us started, for example, y equals f of x is how that would be read, y equals f of x. This shows that y is a function of x. And then what I want to do is kind of quickly talk about in function notation, in this example, X is our input. This is what we also call the independent variable. And then Y is our output. Also, you'll hear it be called the dependent variable. The value of your output depends on your input. All right, so if we kind of go back to that sales tax example, and express this using function notation, what we would say, so our output here is C. So C is, which is an equal sign in math, a function of, our input is X again. So C equals F of X. C is a function of X. Okay, let me stop for a minute, give you kind of a 
second. Let your brain drive. What questions do you have? this next graph. You are asked in the first uh, three questions to evaluate f of 2, etc. What this is asking you, this expression is asking you what is the output when the input is 2? What is the output when the input is 2? So we are looking on our graph. When the input is 2, I'm going to look on my horizontal axis, my input is 2. On that graph, what is the output? It's just, I mean, we don't know the actual like equation for this graph. It's just kind of whatever that equation is that you want. With rational functions is when we talked about that in algebra 2. Um, when you have a factor on top of the bottom, you can use rational functions when you put a factor on top of the bottom. Yeah. It's a good question, but we don't really know why that We are wanting to know the output when the input is 3. When the input is 3, the output is 2. All right, so these were what, 0, 3, and 2. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. What this is asking is, when the output is 0, what's the input? When the output is 0, so again, we're going to look right here, the input is 0. What else are we seeing? We have true. Okay, so let me talk about why that is. Your output is zero. So you are looking at what output values, in this case, y values are zero. You have y values of zero when x is negative three, when x is zero, and when x is two. And yes, all of them need to be included to have a complete All right, so the last one, again, we're looking for the input. What is the input when the output is 3? So it kind of helps when you're looking here, look horizontally. 
where do you see that function going through three in your y values? Mimi? Okay, so we see x values of four and negative two, absolutely. All right, last few little things here. Um, if you are given a graph and asked to determine whether it is a function or not, we have what we call the vertical line test. So basically what the vertical line test is, I'll just kind of do it up here for you. If you look at graphs two, three, and four, there are, and I'll just pick one, but there are many, many, many places where I can draw a vertical line so that it hits the graph in more than one place. If that happens, these are not functions. Okay, so this is actually something I think they teach in Algebra 1, but I feel great. That's draw a vertical line in some cases that have some good possibilities for it. But why? That's what we do in pre-cal. We do the why. Yes, thank you. Okay, so what he's saying is let's let's pretend that that's it. So you can see in graph one, you draw a whole bunch of vertical lines. There's not a place where it's going to hit twice, so graph one would be a function. Awesome. All right, last thing. I'll try not to talk this long, but this lesson has got a lot in it. All right, so last thing, and I'm going to forewarn you, this will mess with your something we work on that will mess with your head a little bit. When we are looking at a table and determining whether something's a function or something else, what I want you to remember the output is a function of the input. So what we have in this table, um, it says that a waiter is paid an hourly wage plus any tips that he or she receives. The table lists the num excuse me, the number of hours the waiter worked along with the earnings from the day. So this is just day one, he worked six hours, made that amount. Day two, he worked that many hours, made that. I should say he or she, but um, okay. So this is going to take all of these different items, kind of put them in different orders to see what quantities are functions of another. So the first one is the number of hours worked a function of the day of the week. Okay, the first thing that we have to figure out is what's the input and what's the output in this question, which is why I want you to keep that phrase. Output is a function of the input. So the number of hours, that's our output. That's kind of like our Y. Is that a function of the day of the week or of the input, which is X? So when I'm looking at this table, we really have to keep in mind that I'm looking at the day of the week as my input, then the number of hours as the output when I'm determining whether this is a function. So looking at this, 
for the day of the week being the input, do I have any inputs matched with multiple outputs? Yes or no? Where? Okay, but two and three are different inputs. I'm talking about the same input. So if you had two going to four and then two going to five. Okay. So it's whether the input is matched with multiple outputs. It's, there's not, okay? So this is a function. So we kind of explain this. Each day is paired with only one um, number of hours. Let's look at the next one. So now we have is pay a function of the day? So pay is our output or our y. If we want to kind of think about it in those terms. Day again is our input or the x. So again, I'm looking do I have a day that is paired? with more than one pay? No, okay. each day again. So one is only paired with 75, two is only paired with 45 and so on. So this again is a function. Which one are we? Okay, last one. Now is pay, so pay is our output again, a function of the number of hours worked. Is pay a function of the number of hours worked? I wish I did my head up in the front. Which one is it? It'll be. Okay, you're shaking your head? No, why? We have one input that's matched with two outputs. This is not a function. We could say four hours paired with 45 and 40. 